you had a chance to peer into the future and see what gaming would be like in 10 years, how could you refuse? Will there be a USB 6.0 port funneling VR experiences into your ear hole? Well, probably not exactly, but virtual reality will definitely be a part of your future gaming experiences. Even those who aren't excited about the future of VR have to acknowledge the groundbreaking implications of the technology. Even now, in its infancy, VR is being used to treat PTSD, to teach aspiring surgeons, to create new forms of art and expression, and obviously, for playing games. And after having some very nauseous experiences with the latency and low resolution of the earlier Oculus Rift models, I was excited but hesitant when the newly minted dev kit 2 arrived at our offices. But I took it upon myself to see how the device has been progressing, and I can say without a doubt that I'm extremely optimistic after my time with the peripheral. Of all the experiences you can currently have with the Oculus Rift, perhaps the most impressive and functional is Elite Dangerous. And it's not just that the game is markedly more fun and immersive with the Rift strapped to my face. My time with Elite and the Oculus Rift really demonstrated to me why VR headsets will be a mainstay in the future of gaming. Due to the clunky relationship between character movement and head movement in most VR games, cockpit-centric games are ideal for the Rift. Because the player is seated for the duration of the experience, mirroring their avatar in the cockpit, this obstacle to immersion is removed. This may not sound as important as it feels, but when a ship speeds by your cockpit and you can follow it simply by looking as you would in real life, the immersion becomes next level. No longer are you solely using your radar to follow foes, though the radar is incredibly intuitive in 3D. Instead, I found myself craning my neck up left and right in an attempt to reorient myself and rejoin the fray or plot my approach. You viscerally feel your presence inside of a ship with its own spatial dimensions, and beyond that you feel your ship's presence in a vast three-dimensional space where foes can be virtually anywhere around you, and not just in an off-the-screen sort of way, but in a way that really feels real. And this can be taken even further, as evidenced in Eve Valkyrie, where missile lock is established by maintaining line of sight with your VR headset, further reifying the sense of space around you. And space is the name of the game here. The way that docking in Elite feels is something completely otherworldly, it's absolutely surreal. Drifting through the porthole of a massive space station and beholding the grandeur of its interior, I never once thought, this is pretty immersive, as VR tends to make me think. Without a screen border to limit my view of the environment, cavernous spaces actually felt cavernous. A 16-mile-wide space station actually looks to be 16 miles wide, and an asteroid belt seems to stretch on into infinity. Beyond the core gameplay impact of virtual reality, there are more subtle touches that bring Elite Dangerous to life. Hologram menus float in the air on either side of you, triggered to action by a mere glance in their direction. Your avatar's arm pushes and pulls the thruster in direct response to your own thruster. Your position shifts in the cockpit based on gravitational force as you hit the boost. Trails of afterburner smoke hang in the air as your enemies try to evade your crosshairs. There are, however, a few things standing in the way of the Oculus Rift becoming the perfect VR peripheral. The resolution remains a bit too low, though the dev kit 2 is a huge improvement, but there is still a visual screen door sort of effect. When other ships get far enough away, they're practically invisible except as a few light pixels set against the black of space. When your position gets out of sync with where you started, you often find yourself looking down your own neck hole. Further, there's a degree of nauseating screen jitter that occurs, especially with the more technically demanding games. But these are the growing pains of VR's infancy. They're definitely hindrances, but the promise of the medium is still there. And while the current state of the Rift may be more of a proof of concept, fit only for the developers, the early adopters, and the thick walleted among us, the dev kit 2 is enough of an improvement over the first model, in my opinion, to have me psyched for the ever-improving VR experience, especially with games like Alien Isolation, Eve Valkyrie, The Forest, and more on the way with this technology in mind. Whether you buy into the hype or not, the experience of putting on a VR headset and forgetting the world around you is so immersive, so incredibly different than anything I've ever experienced, that it's hard to imagine a future where virtual reality isn't commonplace. And I for one look forward to it.